Speaker. Mr. Speaker, with your kind permission, let me uh, not use the mask because of my glasses. It becomes very difficult if I'm using both. Yes, I think uh, your, your, your positioning may, may allow you to. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Yes. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me pick up from where Honorable Limo has said that he wants to say no, and I want to say I say yes. I support BBI. And Mr. Speaker, one of the beautiful things in life is standing on principle and being consistent on principle. In fact, I am very amazed. Um, I, I was seeing some people already running ahead, uh, sort of guessing what they thought, which is a good thing because I think uh, the standard went ahead of itself, thinking for me what they think I said. But uh, I would want to urge the standard to also hire people who can think ahead because if you actually listen to the questions that I asked the speaker, that in itself should have told you where my thought is, if you are smart enough. But that aside, Mr. Speaker, I just want to thank the speaker for a very seasoned, uh, very good ruling, which actually answered a lot of the issues and concerns that I had raised. Uh, Mr. Speaker, because of time, maybe if I have time at the end, I may trace them. But because of lack of time, maybe Mr. Speaker may not go to them. Uh, originally, I'd actually wanted to speak at length about constitutional legal issues. But following the ruling by the Speaker, I might actually focus on content. And Mr. Speaker, what I would want to say uh, in terms of content on the two-thirds gender issue that most of the members have spoken to and have opposed, I want to say that I was a member of the Parliamentary Select Committee that worked on the Constitution. And Mr. Speaker, that time we had just come from post-election violence, and for us to be in that Select Committee, people thought we are the ones who are bringing the solutions for this country. And when we went to Naivasha, people were waiting for the proverbial white smoke. Because if we didn't get it right, the country was going down the, the, the drain. And so, Mr. Speaker, people expected that we would fail in very, very substantive issues, on issues of devolution, issues of a, a system of governance, um, amongst a myriad of other issues, issues of human rights. Yet, first day, we passed Chapter 1. Second day, chapter two. Third day, chapter three. We stopped, Mr. Speaker, when we came to the issue of, of women representation. If you actually look at the original draft, we had a much bigger number of women that we wanted. But our male colleagues in Naivasha, not even the, 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 the committee, uh, the constitutional uh, select committee, uh, sorry, the group of experts, it was the parliamentarians in Naivasha, our male colleagues most specifically, who refused, and we had to reduce the over 140 women members of parliament to 47. And I remember because I used to be a hardliner on women's issues, I still am, but to some degree I've softened. I, w I had refused and had said we are not moving forward. And I remember to date, Honorable Martha Karua called me aside and said, Mili, sometimes it's about giving and taking in the constitutional making process. And you will not always get what you want, but do you have the substantive things that you want? I will speak selfishly as Honorable Billy Odiambo, a woman, a woman leader who came in on affirmative action and represents a minority of the Subas in Suba North. And I will say that I have got what we want and I will support BBI. Mr. Speaker, if you look at this parliament, we have struggled to ensure that the two-thirds gender rule is effected, and we have failed miserably. The, our male colleagues here have told us to buy them dinner, buy them lunch, buy them breakfast, dance, sit, jump, frog march, do everything. And when it comes to voting, we don't even get the numbers. We are getting an opportunity to piggy ride on BBI, if you are a woman committed to women's issues, support BBI, because then it will give us uh, the numbers. I, am, I find it very curious when I hear members talking about the issue, about how parliament you are going to be very many. But it only comes up in discussion when we are discussing women. When it comes to the issue...
I think that is the farthest from the truth. Today I walked in here, Mr. Speaker, and I think I was very smartly dressed because people are telling me, Millie, that's a very beautiful dress. I will come tomorrow with another different design. How you love my dress is a matter of choice. But in the end, I am dressed well, and I am covered. And that is what we are saying of women. Are you covered or are you not covered? So as to the process, that is up to you. We are getting women empowered. I came here on affirmative action, Mr. Speaker. And people were saying that we will not be regarded. That is true. That is part of what you must go uh, deal with in politics. There are always the highs and the lows. Honorable Tiende Amolo was just up to a few minutes ago, the vice chair of uh, JLAC. Now he's no longer there. That's part of, of politics. And you learn to live with it. And if, Mr. The, Speaker, the, I don't know if it is my it phone. Must be, oh, it must sorry. be your phone, the Honorable Minister. And Mr. Speaker, I'm sorry about that. No, Mr. Speaker, this is somebody from a part of my constituency called Urianda. But that aside, Mr. Speaker, I just want to say that e even for us as women, you'll get challenges. That doesn't mean that we are any lower. And in any event, you are supposed to come in to learn politics. So if you are going to face those challenges, you are learning politics. I learned politics the hard way, and I've gotten elected now two times. And by God's mercy and grace, I'm going to get elected the third time. Then I'll decide what to do. Come, having come in here on affirmative action, so I support two-thirds. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, I support 35% against consistency. When I was in the select committee, I supported 40%. Mr. Speaker, I can even tell you where I was seated. Some of these things is not even about whether it's wrong or right. And I can tell you who pushed for it to go under. It was none other than the Deputy President, William Samoei Ruto. And the Hansard report can bear me right. That is the one who pushed the percentage down. It was originally 40%. And Mr. Speaker, I pushed and I supported 40%. I would have preferred 40%, but 35% up from 15, I'm okay. Mr. Speaker, NGCDF. I hear people talking about how NGCDF does not help, blah, blah, blah. Mr. Speaker, unless you are a stranger from Jerusalem, where we come from, where money was not being received because we've always been in opposition, I can afford to even call the president names because I know we have CDF. We are giving a problem to our ward reps because they, they are, it's not entrenched. There are some counties that have them. Why don't others not have them? Because we have left it at the whim of the governance. When the bill came here to this parliament to pass the Ward Development Fund, it was dropped in a record two minutes, Mr. Speaker. And we are saying that we will pass. No, we will not pass it unless it is constitutional. And I just want to encourage members, let us not fear our MCS. Once we have the oversight for, for, for ward development fine, and MPs have oversight of our NGCDF, all of us are happy. We have something to oversight that is linked to us. And Mr. Speaker, I'm speaking my words very carefully. I'm talking of oversight. Mr. Speaker, I want to also say I'm very happy that it provides about party nominations. Uh, be, uh, primaries, rather, which has been a very thorny issue. I won't go into it. Again, I am actually amazed that I'm hearing lawyers saying that providing for CSS within this house is unconstitutional. Please, go back to your first year note. That is called parliamentary system. It is not unconstitutional. And when I came into this parliament, we had that system. It is the best system that we can have. The system where we actually threw out Honorable Kimunya and I'm hearing people say, how will we oversight? We oversighted him out of his position. Why? Because if right now, Mr. Speaker, if there's one thing that is, I find horrendous, that instead of sitting in this house and dealing with our issues as members of parliament, you find members lining in ministries, looking for whether there is water, whether there is roads, whether there is this, if you are in this house, I will ask you direct, and if you joke with us, we will throw you out the way we said Kimunya must go. We will, we will declare for you. But because when you are a member and you are with us, you will listen to us. Mr. Speaker, let me go to the, uh, I know because of time, how many minutes do I have? 
The Honorable Mill, you have four minutes. Four minutes? Yes. That is unfortunate. I just wanted to raise some uh, constitutional legal issues, but because of time, let me try to rush. Mr. Speaker, I know that the Speaker has spoken at length to some constitutional legal issues, but I wanted to add one, of, one or two things because of the issue of posterity. I want us to look at Article 2.3, which says of the Constitution that says the validity or legality of this Constitution is not subject to challenge by or uh, on before any court or other state organ once it is passed. Uh, that is food for thought. Mr. Speaker, I want to talk about 2.5 of the Constitution that says the general rules of international law shall form part of the laws of Kenya. What are the general rules of international law? The general rules of international law are the laws that are said, um, are, are laws that are respected or uh, accepted by civilized nations. In Latin terms, and I'm glad my dear brother is not here because the other time he said that he couldn't understand me, we call them jus congens principles. And these are the only rules, Mr. Speaker, or principles that you can test the Constitution against for unconstitutionality or identity. And I will give you the example, the right to self-determination, prohibition of acquisition of territory, genocide, slavery, torture, piracy, racial or ethnic discrimination. If BBI had any of those provisions, then it will raise what is called erga omnes um, obligations. And these are obligations towards everyone, meaning it is not only the Parliament of Kenya that will have obligations to make sure they are removed. It will be the entire world that will not allow you to have such a standards. Otherwise, for every other thing, Mr. Speaker, that is up to you based on the supremacy of the people of Kenya. And this is actually one of the questions I asked the Speaker. And the speaker didn't mention it because I think he had quite a, a, a plethora of issues. That can we provide a system for Kenya which is sui generis and which is, or except, or, which is very special to Kenya and unique to Kenya? Yes, of course, the people of Kenya can do so. And I want to give you an example, Mr. Speaker, that on the issue, issue of CDF, I hear people saying that there is a, a, an issue of conflict separation of powers. First of all, CDF, we are actually oversighted. But should we actually decide as the people of Kenya to provide a fourth category for MPs? Because currently we have three, which is legislation, representation, and oversight. But Kenyans have given us a fourth mandate, which is development, harambes, funerals, and all that. Should we then, as Kenya, decide that we want to add development? Then it is up to us. We can bring a system that is sui generis Kenya. This is not the Bible. The only thing that I am told that I cannot change or amend is the Bible. But we can come up with a system that the entire world can emulate based on the situation and the circumstances of Kenya. Mr. Speaker, I would also want to say that perhaps what we can look at is uh, the issue of governance. Uh, because of lack of time, maybe I may not speak to that. But Mr. Speaker, perhaps people have alluded to the lowering of governance standards. And of that, I will speak to it in relation to Article 2.6 of the Constitution. I've looked at the treaties that Kenya has ratified, and we are not under BBI in violation of those treaties. Finally, Mr. Speaker, again, because I'm seeing my time is out, I would want to say that the problem we have, it's not an expanded uh, uh, executive or legislator. It is corruption. And BBI talks about dealing with corruption. And Mr. Speaker, based on that, I support. Thank you. Absolutely right, the Honorable Mili. The sovereignty of the people of Kenya can never be doubted. They can provide for whatever they wish, how to govern. I agree with you. The Honorable Shabir, member for Kisumu East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Firstly, let me confirm that I...